Assemble Productions, where we strive to blow up your old paradigm. Alright, I'm going to allow everybody to introduce themselves, and then we're going to get started with our study session and our conversation. And always realize our conversation is not limited by what we're reading, you know, whatever, I mean, because we, we live in a dynamic time, so sometimes our study and our discussions need to be dynamic and that means flowing with the time flowing with what comes up on your mind those of you that's out there listening to us because we're out here we're broadcasting live those of you that's listening you can send us a text if you are on um the spreaker channel you can send us a check we can chat directly with you with us i'll see it immediately and also those of you that's on facebook i'm sharing right now God, I can't share from here on Facebook, so I got to take a whole nother route. All right, so we're about to get started. Um, but where we at? Page one seventy-five. Oh, by the way, I want to thank Brother Mansoor for the ancestral flow. That was the track that started us off. Mm. You know, I'm into promoting on uh, local artists and stuff like that because if we don't support them, who will? So big ups to Brother Mansoor. And somebody want to start reading? Oh, my fault. We are on. Um, we're coming from the gospel of hip-hop. And the chapter we are on is called uh, The Third Overstanding, The Divine Performances. We are on Performance 11, Perform Truth. Perform Truth. Don't just seek to know the truth. Seek to perform the truth. Be as genuine and as real as you can. While everyone else performs behind your variety while everyone else performs behind their variety of masks and phony personalities, you must be the truth in such illusionary effect circles. Mm -hmm. This is what it means this is what it means to keep it real. It means to be true to yourself. Be your true self. Don't hide behind false falsities falsities and illusions. Such a performance leads to nowhere. Knowing truth is to know what is real. Performing truth is to manifest or actualize what is real. But what is real as it pertains to truth? What we know to be real and what is real are two different things. Truth is the ultimate reality of reality itself. It is the real reality of reality. It is the whole. It is what it is. To perform truth means that we believe to be real correspond. To perform truth means that what we believe to be real corresponds with what is actually real. Most people experience all kinds of things in their lives, and their experiences are indeed real to them. But in truth, their experiences are not real at all. Experiences, experiencing, experiences in material, re, material reality are more the opinions of the observer than that of actual truth. Yes, your experiences are 
true, T-R-U-E, they are the reality you experience. However, they may not be the truth, the reality you truly have. The, tr the material world is true, but the spiritual realm which, proje proje which projects the material world into existence is the truth. It may be true that you are in prison, but the truth is that prison was first inside of you. Mm -hmm. Deal with the truth and you will and you shall be free. Know this. There is reality, and then there is your perception of that reality. Reality is the truth, but your perception of that reality is a fact. It is true for you. In the material world, what is called truth is actually an agreement as to what is real. These are called facts. And so many people rely upon the facts of life as opposed to the reality of life. Perform truth. For truth is the whole for truth is the whole, while lies are its fragments. Falsity is the fragmentation of the truth. Falsity takes a fragment of the truth and treats it as if it is the truth itself. Do not be led by falsities, illusions, and lies. Seek truth, seek truth, perform truth. Be a whole person as often as you can. Be mindful how many times you fragment and hide your true self for the sake of others. Practice being whole and transparent. Truth is also freedom from the bondage of ignorance. Truth is the revelation of what already exists but just, but just could not be comprehended or seen before. Truth is the cause of awareness or all awareness. Truth is happening right now as you read this gospel. For truth is the ultimate gospel. But no gospel is the ultimate truth. Truth cannot be actually written down. In reality, truth cannot even be described in words. All words, numbers, shapes, and letters are symbols which assist us in understanding the realm in which truth exists. Words, numbers, shapes, and letters, even dancing, rapping, and singing are all translations of what, truth, of what is really the truth. Therefore, we must seek truth beyond the material world and its symbols. And we must seek truth beyond our physical senses. These truths, I mean, these tools, symbols, and distances fragment the truth so that we may create an ordered world, ordered world out of the truth that is a chaotic oneness. Seek truth, be truthful, and perform your truth. All right. So, uh, since they don't introduce themselves, we have Sister Shamika and Sister Tracy sitting up in here. Uh, Shamika be making sure our kids eat on every other every week. Uh, and be collecting the money, so I gotta keep my eye on her. <laughs> Look, so, get your hands <laughs> out <of> my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and we got, and we got Sister Tracy, who is our our, our, our Vedic math teacher. She's studying Vedic math, and she making sure that we understand the uh, um, the proper way of, of doing numbers and the power of numbers. So, mm -hmm. anybody want to go somewhere with that with this perform truth piece? Because I had to step out to get my highlighter. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I want to, you know, but one of the things that hit me is he said, know this. This is uh, verse 5. Know this. There is reality and then there is your perception of reality. And mm -hmm. um, I just did a show. Matter of fact, it was Friday night where at the end of the story is a, is a story that I uh, came up with years ago called Will You See Shit? I See Fertilizer. Mm. And it's all about changing perception. And and it's important that people understand that your perception is everything when it comes to basically dealing with reality. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, there's thousands of stories coming from our ancestors about people being in what they perceived as a hell, but it actually was not a hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, um, and one story that comes to mind is this dude who was scared of snakes had to go on a long journey that he was told was filled with snakes. So everything that he saw that was rope-like, he thought it was a snake. And um, he made it to an uh, inn, and they say he went to the inn, he went there to go to sleep, he laid down, and he got comfortable when all of a sudden, in the dark, he saw a snake. And he died right there. That, right there in that moment he from fear he set up and he just basically died because mm -hmm. he made it all this way without mm -hmm. seeing any snakes but in the morning when the dude came in and cleaned the room he saw the dude looking frightful and just basically dead and sitting in front of him was a coiled rope mm. this man saw a snake 
his perception told him that a snake was there. You know what I'm saying? Our, our perception fucks us up. Mm -hmm. Especially if we coming from, like, for example, in our community, we have a lot of trauma. So that trauma is the lens through which we see a lot of the world. So some of us, because of the trauma that we have been through as a people, as individuals, our whole reality is basically fucked up because the lens of our own basic, the lens that we are viewing it through mm -hmm. is, is tarnished mm -hmm. with our pain, with the pain of our ancestors. So we can't see nothing but hell. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go off. Okay. No, but that's the same thing as, um, like you're saying, we expect the worst and instead of and hope for the best and expect the worst. It's right. like, that's, we, that's how we actually live, you know, right. like, you, mm -hmm. all right, you know, the whole idea of something's bad going to happen, you know, it's like, it's there, it's not, it's always evident. But what I, um, I liked is in verse four, where, yes, your experiences are true, and then, he, he breaks it down with the uh, the reality you experience, but it not, may not be the truth, the reality you truly have. Mm. You know, so when we talk about perception, it's like the way we perceive things versus the way they really are. So how do you really decipher the two? Like, you know, do you still live in, in this little illusion mm -hmm. that this is how it is and it really ain't mm -hmm. that way, you know, so... But it, it still goes that. back to even to what, what Hatem was saying. It becomes uh, even a process where you're facing your fear, even if it is dealing with the whole truth of whatever type of situation. So that's how, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. taking the story and then real life, even for us to be able to deal with truth, we have to be able to face it right. holistically. Right. Yeah. Be able to, mm -hmm. as he said, be a whole person, be whole mm -hmm. in, in dealing with something. And a lot, I mean, a lot of our part, I mean, it's, it's we, we are living, because he, he used the word fragment, we're, we're living a fragmented existence, mm -hmm. and we're taught to see fragments, we're given fragments, and we're told that this is the truth. Here's another story, mm -hmm. about the beginning of the world, they mm -hmm. said, it was a story I read in college, where, um, um, the first man and first woman, uh, uh, Ask God, they said, God, give us the truth. God said, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> they said, yeah, we can't handle the truth. So they stayed on God, begging God, we want the truth. Now we down here, we're in existence, we think we deserve the truth. You can't handle the truth. So finally God decided to give him the truth. So it, he, or it, formed the truth into a mountain-sized mirror. Mm. And he said, here's the truth. And he dropped it on his shoulders. Now, you know, of course we were stronger back then because we didn't have all these pollutants and stuff. And they was able to hold it up for a while. But eventually, the mirror slipped. And when it fell, it hit the earth and it crashed. And out of all of the thousand pieces that it, that it broke into, maybe even millions of pieces, individual different people start rising up and grabbing one piece of that mirror and looking into the mirror and said that they had the truth and went in their own direction. Mm. So the whole truth got fragmented and spread out and everybody got their little piece arguing mm. about their little piece being the truth when it's just one, it's just the part of a larger truth. mirror. Right. You know, um, we live in fragments of truth. Um, and it's, it's, it's tearing the world up. Mm -hmm. So let's go perform skill. Number 12, because the hip hopper is the independent and self-sufficient and self-sufficient in the world, perfection, oh my fault, let me read off. Because the hip hopper is independent and self-sufficient in the world, perfection of a chosen skill that is in demand gives the hip hopper a lifestyle that supports the seeking of her purpose in peace. As with the performance of discipline, seek the perfection of your chosen skill, practice, perfecting your skills. Most people want many things for themselves. Some have dreams and goals they wish to achieve for themselves, but they just continue to admire the achievements of others because they simply have not mastered the skills needed to manifest their own dream and goals. All goals require skill mastery to be achieved. The most important question a hip hopper can ask when daydreaming visualizing, praying, and or wishing for things 
and desirable situations are, what am I actual cap actually capable of doing? What can I really accomplish? What have I mastered? And what are my skills? Those without a perfected skill that is in demand will find it difficult to lead an inner city spiritual life. Having a skill that is in demand is what separates the one who is chasing resources and opportunity from the one who is chased by resources and opportunity. Attuned hip hoppers are experienced in hip hop's nine elements and we are experts at two or more hip hop artistic elements. We seek to sharpen our skills in every phase of life in teaching, in nurturing, in apologizing, in loving, in playing, in fighting, in speaking, in cooking, in working, in cleaning, in eating, with all the elements of hip hop and with all of the performances of the divine performance, perform with skill. Seek to be an expert at all that you do. Do nothing haphazardly. When performing your skill, you must be conscious of how skillful you are. Attuned hip hoppers who perform a divine performance learn that each performance requires spiritual skill. In many cases, such skill is found and perfected in battles, confrontation, and threatening situations. Never seek confrontation, but never be afraid to fight or display your skill. It is when we are challenged by people, places, things, and events that we are made strong and skillful in life. For at the end of all human knowledge and strength, God shall appear. Once fully practiced in overcoming the challenge of life, the attuned hip hopper is spiritually strong and prepared to teach and lead others. Perfect your cultural, spiritual, artistic, and intellectual skills by performing your skills often. As Henry W. Longfellow once stated, I will be a man among men and no longer a dreamer among shadows. Henceforth, be mine a life of action and reality. I will work in my own sphere, nor wish it other than it is. This alone is health and happiness. Perform skill. Dope. That was dope. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any comments? No? Right, well, let's keep moving. Our intelligence is created to creatively inquisitive therefore practice asking questions especially about the things that you are are already familiar with for it is the question that drives us towards our God and not necessarily the acquired answer asking the right questions leads to spiritual awareness and peace at the start of one's quest for spiritual awareness one must ask the correct questions that will expand one's ability to acquire and apply correct spiritual knowledge. We must question God to know more about our God. Mm -hmm. For it is indeed true that your God will always answer all your questions with astonishing accuracy. The hip hopper uses faith to see what is not yet physically there and uses action to, to bring those things into existence. Intelligence, the ability to know and perceive. Questions the two. Be careful. Question God, but never doubt God. Just as our faith sees and confirms what is not yet physically possible, our intelligence must ask questions concerning the possibilities of what is perceived to be possible, but do not allow the performance of your intelligence to override your faith. For we are guided by the questions we ask, not necessarily by the answers we get, but once our intelligence has given its performance, it must be put back into its place. In the dimension of questions, perception, logic, and rationale, this is what it means to perform your intelligence. Do not allow your intelligence to just rule over your life. Apply its sharp inquiry and sense of perception when necessarily to shape the reality that you truly desire. We hip hoppers should pay more attention to how we view the world because the solutions for many of society's ills lies inside of us. Hip hoppers must question the so-called facts of physical world, but after gaining an awareness of one's spiritual nature, 
Question not, only believe the truth of one spirit. As Colton reminds us, doubt is the vegetable. Vegetable, really? Mm-hmm. Which all must pass before they can eat, enter the temple of wisdom, perform intelligence. That's like a test, vegetable. Okay, mm-hmm. vegetable. All right. So I want to go back a little bit. Um, the skill piece. Um, because I, I don't want to get past that without talking about, because he's talking about attaining mastery and whatever skill. Um, he said some um, important things. Um, the one is uh, mastery is what separates those who pursue jobs and, and, and um, income um, rather than income and jobs pursuing them. Those who are masters um, are pursued by um, the things that they need and by you perfecting the skill and practicing the skill on a regular basis you open yourself up to basically abundance and then perform intelligence the uh, one piece that was important to me that he said in there was we must question God to know more about God mm-hmm. and you know it's like uh, many of us come out of traditions where you weren't even allowed to ask questions right <laughs> right like, you know what I'm was saying like it, was, it was almost like a yeah. blast for me to to ask a question, but in order to know something, you have to explore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, um, the, the, you can't tell me the totality of God is in just in the Bible or in a book or in the Quran, but in some of these traditions, they will kill you mm-hmm. if you ask the wrong questions, if you are in the right country at the right time. <laughs> so, But, um, okay, this is where I have an issue with that because you're really not questioning God. You're questioning the other person to true. answer for God, so this is probably why they like don't question God. Well, you're not God. I mean, I'm asking since you claim it to be, I guess, the vessel of, mm-hmm. and so I'm expecting that you had to answer. Don't question me, right? <laughs> That's basically what they should have said, but it's like don't question right. God, right? Right? Wow. So, so some yeah. people use God as a shield to hide their mm-hmm. own ignorance. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and respond violently because they actually like, going back to that piece about. The, the perception, they perceive that they are the vessel of God, and if they can't answer, it must be something wrong with the question mm-hmm. or something wrong with you. Right. So since I can't get rid of the question, I get rid of you. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in verse 5, he said, uh, we hip-hoppers should pay more attention to how we view the world because the solutions for many of society's ills lie inside of us. Mm. So true. I mean, because we was talking about that before we turned on the mic. You know, what are some of the solutions? And the very solutions that we're looking for are lying right in this room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We just got to figure out how to use them, how to put them together, and apply them. It was um, Tom Breaker on Facebook. You know, she, <laughs> she was mad about something. And um, it, the way it started was like she was bad, mad about somebody's complaints because her, her post was like, okay, yeah. This happens to us, but what are you going to do? <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. what are you going to do? You know, instead of, you know, just, you know, fussing about it, what are you going to do? And so, I, and, and that is something that is the question. What are you going to do? And, mm-hmm. and and that's what the problem is, is sitting back waiting for something to happen for us. And, you know, I had a, um, uh, she's more like an aunt because she's a cousin and she's like way older, you know. But my cousin, he's, he's, um, He's a black man, and he was like, you know, he's frustrated, and he's on Facebook, and he's, you know, ranting about it, uh, you know, showing his anger, and she goes and comments, like, um, something along the lines, like, honey, we're just going to pray and let God handle that, you know, which is fine, Mm -hmm. but, um, but when you, uh, when we talk about God, um, what I learned coming up was, um, work in correspondence with your prayers you mm-hmm. know and so that made me mad you know what I'm saying so I'll post it faith without works is dead you know right. because right. that's what it is you know yeah you know you're praying for this you're praying for this change but you can't sit back and just be like you know handle it and then be mad when it ain't happening right. you know so yeah um, and then also like um, verse 4 we are guided by the questions we ask, not necessarily by the answers we get. Mm. I think that's definitely good for youth. You know, there are questions that they're asking. You know, mm-hmm. there there's 
questions that they can access that make us think, yeah, mm. you know, that's right. something I need to right. check on. You know, right. not necessarily what the answer is, but it intrigues the mind to open up to right. want that. It's questions that makes it's questions that make us wise, not the answers. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 if you go into a class with with grown folks or children, one of the things that I have noticed over the last Twenty years is the amount of questions have actually dropped. I come in, I could say some, I could say some crazy shit, and nobody asks questions mm-hmm. at all. So everybody understood what I talked about. You know, nobody, nobody asks questions. Twenty years ago, I couldn't get away with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Twenty years ago, they, they was asking questions, mm-hmm. and out of them asking questions, I became better at what I was doing but now nobody it's like it's hard you're hard pressed to find anybody that's asking questions you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. I mean you know then or you might get that one person that's expressing anger not asking questions see because they don't want a resolution they want to fight right you know -hmm. I'm too old for that now um asking questions so my um I'm my when I was little that's what um that's what my aunt told me. If I want to know something, I need to ask. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of like, well, what is that and how is that? If I'm not asking it, then I'm, there's no way that I'm going to get to finding out what mm-hmm. that answer is. And so then as I got older, um, well, my mom would go to make like big decisions. I'm like, Tracy, come on, ride with me. Because <laughs> I'm the one, well, wait a minute. How is that going to work? Well, ex- explain this, explain that, you know. And so that's what I learned that she liked about, you know, me coming with her mm-hmm. and so I can ask these questions that she's like yeah cause you ask stuff I don't I didn't think to ask you know mm-hmm. so yeah it works out <laughs> but see people what it is 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 that idea of if I ask a question is that a stupid question mm-hmm. so here we go we are worried about other people's other, perception yeah. yeah she and babe put it in a hook it's the questions mm-hmm mm. Or uh, black dot. Bla- no more black dot. Most stuff. Most stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the question. So, uh, any others? Any other insights? Outsights? Uh, yeah, let's take a commercial break. You have something? Go ahead, say something. Welcome, Trina. <laughs> Look what the captain John did. They can't see the peace symbol. You got to say to this radio. Trying to hide. This is for war. <laughs> <laughs> she just gave me the finger. <laughs> Honoring those who made the sacrifice. Those who died. Those who bones lie deep in the Atlantic Ocean. Those ancestors stolen from the motherland and taken to another land. We honor you, I say, I say. We honor those freedom fighters like Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Mary Bethune, Nat Turner, and the thousands of others who fought, who bled, who died. I say, I say. We honor those, the unknown warriors, whose names we don't know, who fought, who bled and died for freedom. As we pour and we say, I say, I say. We honor the unborn children who will continue the legacy of sacrifice, who will fight in honor of those who fought the fight. I say, I say, we call out to those, join the fight. Join the fight and continue to honor those who fought, who bled, and who died. I say, I say, and honor those who fought the fight. I 
Get up, stand up, get up, stand up, stay in the fight, fight with all your might, take the time to honor those who fought the fight, Marcus, Malcolm, Oh, he'd be knocked it wrong. <laughs> yeah, all this stuff she right past me. Or did it? I mean, it was nothing. You know, I don't so, know if it was. Also I keep, too I keep is pleading like, ball. You know, I any, mean, so. Any incident where got, we could tear us down even more. It was something work, that I so, knew firsthand right. about what was you know going on. I forget what the situation yeah. was. Oh, but then when the, yeah. when the, when the media I just was wondered how he had the It wasn't telling that part of the story. So that's what, this part is what I know. So you do that probably with all the stories. Every last story that, like I said, that you could think of that you had. The internal knowledge. I just think the, they're a different breed. Mm-hmm. Like I Let think they might be handling it and just right. waiting. Right. They looking at us, facts, looking at what's going on. Mm-hmm. They probably got the answer and yeah. waiting for us to move out the way. Because <laughs> it was a low boy. Who, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, I don't think they're gonna be much for talking or laying in the awful. street. I mean, it's yeah. all a part of it, as far as I'm concerned. No revolution was really ever sparked by anybody over thirty five. They were trying to say yeah. that your <laughs> uncle put him in that danger. Very yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Checking it out and listening like, to his teachers. And, to to say, you know, just taking it. Oh, they talking about it in their school? Class? Yeah, but right. not in the so, like, manner in which we would. Because he go to, he loved mom. You know, mm-hmm. loved his nephew. He just as hurt as we are. And you're, so they have different so, viewpoints. Uh, like yeah. All right, so we back. Who want to start raging? Oh, we keep talking about the Mike Brown, the brother in New York. Issue, you know, because I had some shit to piss some people off real quick. I you know. Oh, was y'all talking about it earlier? Uh, a little okay. bit, but not really on air. It's probably for two coming on because, you know, it's like for me, I don't, I, I, I can't get upset because I, how can I put it? I expected, I expected the ruling. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't shocked, so I can't get upset. But before the ruling, mm-hmm. I don't do the TV either. But before the ruling, I'm looking at it ain't my son, but it is my son. Mm-hmm. Not my nephew per se, but that that's mm-hmm. my nephew. Mm-hmm. And just to see it, mm-hmm. it sends an unbelievable rage. Mm. Oh. Now, let me explain why the rage don't rage in me. Uh, August. I'm with a whole bunch of Mike Browns. Every other Saturday, I'm with a bunch of other Mike Browns. 
so I could talk with uh, young people so that before they get into a situation like that, maybe maybe I could prevent that from happening to who's in my circle. I'm doing the work, so I don't get upset about it. I'm not mad. I can't, you know what I'm saying? Because this is, uh, we at war. We know this. That's a casualty of war. I mean, am I supposed to get mad because my enemy, my do enemy, what they do. do what they do, <clears throat> what they have been doing. I I come from a family where I I had a lynching as a, what as close to a lynching in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? By white folk. You know what I'm saying? As well as some 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 treacherous shit from black folk. Mm-hmm. So you know I'm not going. I'm not. I'm just going to keep on doing the work that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? So you know, shouts out to. Um, Mike Brown and his family and the brother in New York. What's the brother? Eric Garner. Eric Garner mm-hmm. in New York. Shouts out to their family and um, the brothers here in Ohio. Brother, and Walmart. Yeah, the two brother, young Girl. boy in um, the young fellow in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, the brother down down in southern Ohio got just... shot with a with an air gun. You know, um, <laughs> you know. The brother last night in L.A. What happened in L.A.? Murdered a a protester in the street. Ah, the murder. And regardless of doing the work, because I think everybody here at the table is doing the work. Mm-hmm. And um, I won't say everybody here. I don't know how we feel about knowing that we at war. But you better ask that question. That's a good mm-hmm. question. Right? <laughs> how do we feel about knowing? Do we know we at war? Oh, I'm, I'm clear. Um, but it's just another thing for me to, like, see it in my face. And I've had the opportunity to catch some of the... Um, the video on uh, YouTube and looking how they lie in plain sight, like right in your face, yo. Mm-hmm. And different people just talking about it and their spins and just how nasty that beast can be, just right to your face, looking in your eyes. And and then I wonder and think about the mass and who do know. Like you, you pose the question that we're at war. And it's just not that we're seeing the bodies fall, but who honestly know, you know, and who are, who is dialoguing about what's going on, what's going down. Did y'all see my response? Well, you know, y'all don't follow the timeline. But uh, uh, on our timeline, um, Deshaun got on and asked, what do you think about the verdict? Okay, I missed that. Right. Did you see that? The chicken in that. Uh, the chicken, yeah. Oh, no, did I comment on that? Yeah, I think I the did. The chicken, yeah. I mean, because that that's how, that, for me, that's how I've been looking at it for a long time. How can a chicken go to a fox and ask the fox for justice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah you did it. Yeah, yeah, I read it. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yes, it, that yes, makes that no right. sense to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? We got the, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, because, you know, uh, uh, and I, this is how I will stop police from brutalizing our kids and this is this is the true and the real for me when a police officer disappears from the face of the earth for fucking with ours that's when it'll stop nobody know nothing nobody saw nothing it's not even in the news he just gone because he can't do that in other they don't do that in other communities they do it in ours because they know we're going to do protests and we're going to get loud. You know, because I, I done been through this phase in college. I done watched it. And and I watch it in our communities when my my younger brothers kill each other. You know, we mm. get upset about it. We wear John JJ's t-shirt. Ah, JJ! And don't even, don't even holler at his kids three months after he's dead. Mm-hmm. JJ's kids is just dead with... JJ's baby's mama and nobody talks to the kids and this shit is going on and all of us know people like this. Mm-hmm. So we know all you got to do, all all they do is wait things out because they said their strategy last night, no, it was Friday night when people was laying down in um, um, Grand Central night? Station. Oh. When they protested Grand Central Station, you know what the police strategy was? Just wait. Just wait. They're not going to stay here that long. <laughs> Right, so we don't even gotta get hyped up. Like, oh, you disrupting? Yeah. Yeah. So we ain't. I mean, you know, I mean, but there's other things that we could be doing. 
that we don't need to be talking about over the air that we that, that we could be doing. Um, there's certain things that we could be learning. We we need to really learn this social media piece and to be able to really be effective with what we want to do. You know, because taking away money from anybody is a is a major blow, especially when you're at war. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is. Where we at? <laughs> we <did>. Where we <laughs> at? Perform communication. Anybody want to wear it, read it? I will. <clears throat> Be aware of what you are communicating to the world. Do not just talk for the sake of talking. Be mindful of the wor- word, thought action that you may communicate to others. Instead, of speaking out of idleness, perform silence. Most events, good and or evil, begin with the thoughts and then the words and then the actions. The tune hip hop creates a productive life arena through the thoughts and the words he chooses to express. Every thought and spoken ideal creates an awareness around the hip hop. The awareness attracts the people, places, and things that help to openly manifest the intentions of the hip hop's art. <clears throat> By speaking for the sake of joy and peace, the tune hip hop creates an awareness that attracts joy and peace in one's life. A tune hip hop speak of good things so that good things may manifest in their lives and in the lives of others. Do not label your work ready to die unless you are ready to die. (laughs) Mm, Right. (laughs) Do not claim to be criminal minded unless you are prepared for the results of the criminal activity. Do not think or speak those things that you wish to avoid in your life and be careful of what you continuously listen to. Be aware of those who speak with bad intentions or perversions as you as the main subject of the conversation. Seek to correct them humbly if they are simply unaware, or simply avoid their company if they reject the truth. When others are frustrated, use the, the diplomacy and speak from the perspective of wisdom. You can say, just let it go. You're bigger than that. Don't let the situation steal your joy. Forgive them. God has bigger plans for you. Are are they really worth it? Do not judge. Simply make observations and show others with wisdom and understanding the cause and the effects of what they communicate. People should know that your character and your personality is one of maturity and trustworthiness. Lead by example. Advise others with your personality and the results of your life experiences. Do not linger around those who con- who conversate, whose conversation carries impurities and scandals. Seek the companionship of those who study and pray with. Seek the companionship of those who you study and pray with. Know this, communication is not just speech. Hip hoppers communicate through writing, drawing, fashion, personal character, dancing, rapping, eating, etc. For when the attuned hip-hopper finally acknowledges the truth that God is present, the hip-hopper's character changes. And when the hip-hopper's character changes, when the hip-hopper's character is one of righteousness and others are disciplined and inspired not only by the hip-hopper's words, but also by the hip hopper's character and very presence. For there are certain things that people just cannot do in the presence of holiness. <laughs> For the very character of the tune hip hopper disciplines, teaches, and inspires those who surround her. Then why are you always using her, man? Because. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Um. Attuned hip hoppers are more 
about the totality of what is being transmitted or passed on to others than about in which one actually speaks. Did I read that right? While others communicate hatred, we communicate love. While others communicate anger, we communicate joy. Not by speaking it, but by bringing it. Even in the fierce argument, we must practice and strengthen our spiritual reflex. We must train ourselves to never enter into sanity of anger, bitterness, or hatred while arguing. We must perform our communication, not just communicate. For example, we should never argue in front of children. Mm. Mm. I'm so guilty, but go ahead. Mm. Or where they can hear the thoughts of anger, resentful, fearful minds. Discipline yourself. Guide yourself inward, outward, and outward communication. Learn to speak well, write well. Excuse me. Learn to speak well, read well, and write well. These lead to good communication skills. Lead to deliver your point of view quickly and accurately. Get to the point and remember, sometimes the best communication is silence. Never be afraid to say nothing at all. For it is in this performance of one's life that one's intentions are are communicated and then manifested perform your communication and be aware at all times of what you are communicating as well as what is being communicated to you quarrels is that his name yeah. reminds us that if you speak ill of the flee home to the own conscience and examine thy heart if thou be guilty it is just correction. If not guilty, it is a fair instruction. Make use of both. So shalt thou distill honey out of out of gall and out and out of all open enemy create a sacred friend. A secret friend. Perform communication. I check that. Anything stand out in there for anybody? More communication. Mm. <clears throat> I like um, I like how I express. If you don't have anything to say, don't. <laughs> or, or if you know, don't just talk just because it's a silence type of attitude. And um, what I came across just this past weekend is I've been entertained by conversation that is just without substance to me so I'll just <laughs> sit there <laughs> you know I don't have anything to add to the like I mean I, I don't want when I say ignorance and I'm saying that as far as the lack of knowledge literally you know so like like when you say like do you know we're at war you know what is this conversation about you know um and uh, another thing that um that came to my attention it was you know the little pieces about you know things that you can say, um, just let it go. You're you're bigger than that. Don't let the situation steal your joy. I was conversating about this earlier. My new question, my my, my new uh, words or <coughs> or question is, what is the benefit? You know, like when I see my kids, like my 16 year old, like she's been doing so well. All of a sudden, you're ready to get in trouble to defend a friend. Tell me how this is a benefit to you. You know, because if this friend isn't going to defend herself, you're about to get into, you know, understand what the consequences are. So tell me what the benefit is. You know, so that's my new, my new expression. What is the benefit? And so that's what I'm starting to ask a lot more often about things. Like before, I'm about to put my energy into doing this. What is the benefit? What is the benefit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. yeah. You know, because what I found is, like I was saying earlier, I've, I've had, I have this newfound energy, and I found that <coughs> is because I'm not, I'm leaving. A lot of BS. <laughs> Where is that? What is the benefit? So, so here I am. I um, mm. I, I admire the um, performance silence. And um, as a child, I was I was mainly quiet unless it was something I wanted to know. Then I would ask. But I was mainly quiet. And I have a daughter like that, a sponge. Mm. You know, mm. and just because mm. she's not saying anything doesn't mean she's not taking it all in. Mm -hmm. And um. I've been coming back around to getting more like her lately. Let me just listen to what you got to say. And if I don't have anything to say about it, I, 
I just sit there. <laughs> you know, so then I have people saying, say something, you know, so I could have some juice on you too. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, so I like that. Um, never argue in front of children. That is like the biggest thing that you know better of that is the hardest thing to really do because when drama start you be trying to sway it but if the dramas keep it, keep going you kind of react to it you know so especially in these small dwellings yeah <laughs> <laughs> right that's give me a wrong there's nowhere else to argue no, I got my, my kids role. all up in my right. business they ain't all rooms right. is open to them like, oh yeah. god because y'all step okay they step right into the next room and there's yes. no door in that room <laughs> right Oh, so it's really one big room. Oh. Yeah, so what I do is I try to, you know, uh, one thing I can say about my children is they know sign language and mouth movements or outside or whatever, which way I point, you know which way to go, get there, you know, because especially when I know I'm about to say some stuff that's about to really not be right. You know, because I always tell me, like, you, you know how to tongue lash somebody. And I try not to do that because mm. I don't, I try not to say things that I'm not going to, that I have to say sorry about. So, <laughs> so I try to avoid that, but it's really hard to do. Um, another thing before we go forward or before I uh, learn to speak well, read well, mm. and write well. Mm. Uh, there was a girl, Facebook has been my life lately. I need to give me some more things to do. Um, <laughs> the, the girl was on um, Facebook and she was actually renting like that, you know, saying like, you know, do uh, what you do, what, what people don't understand is that the music industry is um, owned by the prisons and what they're doing is they're, t they're giving you this information so that that can mislead you. But do that, but what people don't know is the artists have been to college and they have degrees and da 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 da. And then she said, and then she said those words like, if you cannot speak well, then you cannot read well. If you cannot read well, then you cannot write well. If you cannot write well, then you cannot think well. And someone is going to be hired to think for you. I said, what? Mm -hmm. That's what you were saying to me before I left here. We don't, they're, they're not, it's not set up for our kids to think anymore because it's somebody ready to put them to work. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what, that's what, that's what that, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. It's not about them thinking, it's about them working mm -hmm. for somebody, mm -hmm. you know? And so it, that, that keeps being the recycle lately. Ever since you said it, it's been the recycle in my mind lately. Like, that's exactly what it is. And then so when you, when you start looking at a lot of um, things, like um, it was it was something else that I seen. That was implemented, what, three or 400 years ago that it's not about us thinking, it's about us working. So mm -hmm. this piece right here, learn to speak well, read well, and write well, is probably the most important of this whole communication document right here mm -hmm. because that is where people, our kids are getting lost that they're not reading. And then when they're writing, they're writing like they're texting, you know, so. <laughs> Just <laughs> like it goes back to even how Tim's saying they're, they're not conditioned to even question. That stimulates you wanting to know more. That I'm going to go read a book because right. I want to know. I right. mean, so that's that question. Like, right. why is this? Okay, if I can't get that answer, I'm going to go read. You're going to find it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and one of the things, because like, uh, uh, they have catchphrases in education, and it, it kind of kills me. They say, we want rigor in the classroom. We want rigor in the classroom. Like, you know, what the fuck? Rigor. What, what is that? Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to be, like, excited to learn. You're right. Basically, yeah. you're supposed to be excited mm -hmm. to learn. But in order for something to be rigor, in order for you to be, to show rigor in something, it has to have relevance. Mm -hmm. Rigor and relevance mm -hmm. go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But what, what's happening is that it's almost like we've been deadened to a point to where somebody else has to bring the relevance for us. You understand what I'm saying? It's like um, when I first started studying African history, there I had to find the relevance for myself to get interested in studying African history. Mm -hmm. Nobody could bring that relevance to me. I had to mm -hmm. decide it was beyond an African booty scratcher because that's basically the education that I had. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. with all the negative comments, with me being dark-skinned and stuff like that, with mm -hmm. all the negative comments mm -hmm. about Africa, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I had to find mm -hmm. a relevance for myself. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do with some of the kids, when I'm talking to them, I, I can't provide you with no damn relevance, dog. You got to find the relevance in this so that you can get a spark to learn something. Mm -hmm. Everything connects to everything else. And for some reason, 
we don't it's like we live in that fragment of existence and you know i'm isolated i'm i'm an island and the universe rotates around me you know what i'm saying and it's almost like our kids is waiting and some of our adults is waiting for somebody walking around and be like it's you you're the one I've been looking for. Here's a million dollar contract. Sign it right now and right. we'll get right to work. Well, that goes hand in hand with the way they're being taught. It right. is a segregative system. They don't teach, even in some places they do, that math and science are connected. Mm. They don't do it. They, they separate everything else. They it's, This is your tray of food just for you. This is individual. Mm. Everything is individualized. Everything is. You're right. You're right. That's how this society is set up. Oh, on paper, though, it's a say that what you're supposed to do is supposed to be across curriculum and integrated, you know, subjects and everything like that. But when you go and present it, it's not that. So you're, you know, mm-hmm. so I agree with that. And so it, even if it's what it say, if it's not applied, then you don't get it. And then, but it, it goes back to what is important to you. Um, last month, I think um, the um, Millennium Seven was purpose. Mm-hmm. Was purpose. And you know, not it. it what it, what that got me to do on is because my kids is going to the parties. You know, what does it mean to you? Right. And um, so um, then I got what I got is I got um, I got my daughter who's just real. She's going to just give it to me. He's like, okay, let me think about that. That's this is what it is. But I got my son who knows how to like butter me up for real. So I'm like, you know, I explain purpose. I'm like, you know, purpose is like, you know, why is it that you're doing what you're doing? Why do, why do you want? Why are you doing? Why do you want to do these things? Like, what is it that you're doing? Why do you want to do it? You know, my daughter was like, you know, well, my purpose is good grades. You know, what I'm saying I want to make a grades. So I want to be better. And that's her purpose. My son was like, you know, well, mom, I, I want to make you proud. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Got me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Like she said, it just better. Like shut up, no, no, actually, yeah, no like, you know, you know what he's doing. You know, but it's um, but it is talking to them about these things that are going on at school, so that they can see that I'm a part of that too. You know, saying because that is something that probably gets skipped across. Like being being here and into the classroom, that's things that get skipped across and chuck mm-hmm. it for granted. So. This is these characteristics are very important in life, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you'll you'll grow up one day and you're a teenager like, man, yeah, I know something about that. You know, yeah, when I was in elementary, this isn't this, this, you know what I'm saying? Well, now why it's here with them, I'm like going through that, like this is you know what it mm-hmm. is. So it is what's important to you is the question. Mm-hmm. What's important to you? And that's what makes the interest in making the rigor relevant and mm-hmm. so forth. It's just hard to get there if you don't try to get that part and to a certain extent i know that's got to be sad and troubling to see especially given how you had to get and come into awareness of um but i do think especially because we are at war and because you know if your job is the teacher you have to develop that skill set to kind of wake them up until they can go further and it can be done Mm mm-hmm it can't, and if that means shutting the door for a minute, and real talking, being there, um, you know, just having <laughs> a rap. Say, okay, all right, let's put this to the side. What is going on? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you have that. It's been a long time since I've been in the classroom. I, I mean, don't know no, if you have even that. For the, I, I, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I know but exactly in terms what you of mean, because I because I had to do it, you right? Know, I had to do it, like because um, I had kids that think that okay, well, we're gonna. Bounce off the walls and act like this and act like that. And I had to like shut the door and be like, look here. <laughs> Understand where I'm coming from because I don't got games to play with you. And they're looking at me like, can teachers talk like that? Oh, today. What? Today. You brought this out of me. <laughs> <laughs> today. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so then I got to tell you stuff, <laughs> which is fine, which I need. You know, that's what no, I need you to do. No, that ain't fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, that ain't fine. Because then you be like, that ain't, that ain't, ain't fine. fine. That's not good. That's you why know. I deli- develop those relationships, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those teachers develop those relationships so that when the child brings something home, they understand. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, he, don't, he, don't, he don't strike me. Now, Mr. Brown might strike me if somebody said that. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it, it, it's crazy because they, kids, they have, how could, they have learned how to pit all the adults in their life against each other, mm-hmm. whether it's mom and daddy, yeah. whether it's school. Yeah. And, so now I can just sit in the middle and not do nothing. Everybody else is hustling around me. I don't play that shit. I'm, you know, I don't. I, I'm, it, I, I'm sorry. No, nah, no, I feel you on it. It is difficult with that drama my son brought mm-hmm. into my home, mm-hmm. 
and just see it. And now these people just now figuring out it's dude. <laughs> right, but he was good at it like oh. But the in between I was indignant or uh, the creator was with me for real because I was indignant like first of all, I ain't the one that you need to be coming up in here seeing. I'm not the one cuz I'm not I'm not trying to play your game. I'm not trying to, you know, like I you shouldn't be here. I don't like you. I don't want you here mm -hmm. and just telling them up front like you got the wrong person. Mm -hmm. But they got to be here. Yada yada yada. But I'm just saying all that to say um, it's a very and then given knowing the time that I put in every day with others. Right. And then I Eventually, you're going to have to show and prove mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, because no. like, like it's, it's the moment of truth, like gang style. It's like um, even even being here, you know what I'm saying? It's things that, you know, I pick up. I like just even from these few minutes I'm reading, you mm -hmm. know, that you pick up and you're applying, you know, and you're looking at your whole your whole aspect in your life, the roles, you know, we have different roles in our lives that we play, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So how can this be, th this knowledge that I'm getting implemented in the each row, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's funny that you would say that because I, it, I've been having, I've been talking a lot today, haven't I? Because I had another conversation earlier. Like, you know, it's, it's, especially when you, when you get into situations where it's, a set of people trying to make decisions in your life and you don't like them you right. know so <laughs> so um it was my daughter again uh, this is the one who really takes me through it where i have to really kind of keep her focused and um she was going through something at school and my whole thing was the way the principal handled it i didn't quite agree with it but i didn't place judgment on to the principal on how she how I thought she had, she should have handled it. I let her go ahead and do how do it how she wanted to or whatnot, you know. But when I talked to the principal, I let her know. I said, "Well, this situation with the other girl, where the girl's mother told her to do something to my daughter. I'm hoping this situation could get solved at school, <laughs> you know, because that's where it gets ugly, you know, where." It's like it's not just at school, and then parents want to involve themselves. And now I said, and, and I, I said, what is second out of me is having the experience to want to empower and teach our youth takes up all of that that makes me want to say, well, soon as you see her, you need to beat the mess out of her. You know what I'm saying? Because this doesn't make any sense, you know. But because of that positive energy mm -hmm. I have now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's it puts the, it makes me try to help her find the you're bigger than that just let it go <laughs> right. <laughs> you gotta find that mind right. there you go my son brought it to me like wait a minute you raised me to do this this and this but then I found out it was like this this and this and I was like I did like that's that's the only way I knew to do it he like but it didn't match what you told me how people was gonna be it doesn't match and I'm like well I messed up. <laughs> what do you want? I, I'm sorry. He's like, right? he like, well, can I do this now? Can I, can, like, we can real talk. Like, I appreciate because he's 16. Yeah, right, I right. appreciate that. Like, right. you, you telling me, like, mm -hmm. and you telling people, like, different stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is how you see it. I did teach you that. I did tell you, don't go around hitting people. Don't do this and do that. But he like, I'm getting fucked up. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. Ooh, right. Okay, so now you know better. So now you tell me, because see, this is the, this at this age. I thought it was making a better world. Yeah. You was raising yeah. him. You was raising him for a better world. Right. And then he got he got out there and was like, what the fuck is <laughs> right, right. And I'm mad. I'm mad at my <laughs> mama. Oh Lord. She said me up for it's the funny. It's funny that you said it because see, it's it's um, <coughs> it was um that kind of that kind of conversation came be, um with my um kid's father and myself, you know, because um I remember the first incident where I was hit <coughs> as a kid. I was about four years old, and a little girl hit me. She hit me, and I'm like, I came in the house, and I'm like, where did where we do that? At? You know, I was around cousins, you know, so I, I was the baby, you know. So she hit me, and you know, I go in the house, and I'm like, and my mom's like, what's wrong? I was like. Brandy hit me. <laughs> She's like, well, somebody hit you, you hit them back. Okay, so I go out and play. I don't, I'm not the kid to go out and just go ahead and finish up. But I, I went out and played. She hit me. I hit her back. 
she hit me again. I came in the house and I'm out again. My mom like, what's going on? And I said, well, she hit me. I said, she said, I told you if she hits you, if somebody hit, if somebody hits you, you hit them back. I said, I did. And she said, what happened? I said, she hit me again. So I love my mom. Rest in peace. Um, she told me somebody hits you, you hit them back. They hit you again, you hit them harder. So when you grow up and you have kids, <laughs> <laughs> what better advice can you give than what worked for you? And so, um, so that was just it. It was like, you know, my mom was also the, you know, don't start none, won't be none. You know, like she don't ever start a fight. She never, you know, never come out, you know, just picking and da 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 and bullying. She never could on that, you know, but don't sit up and be, you know, weak or whatever, you know. So, it was like that's what it was with my kids. Like you know, this this is how we do things. And so um, then their dad was like, you know, well, no, I'm teaching my kids that they need to go tell. Da, 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 da. I said, you can't go tell. And he was like, uh, well, you know what? I wasn't taught that. <laughs> I wasn't taught that. So then we had. Um, so what we had was we got get into the situation where you had these kids who were well, dad said go tell. And so then after a point, I'm like, he's right. You should go tell. You know what I'm saying? So now at this point, I done taught you. You know you know how to hit back. So you'll know when the time is right that you would need to go ahead and hit back. But, yeah, go tell. My whole thing is, yes, you do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? You go tell. You know, you you handle the situation by letting, putting authority in. You mm -hmm. know, I learned that here, too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there are thrustles like that. Yeah, uh, you know, that stuff about, you know, your mom tell you, you know, somebody hit you, hit them back, you know. You'll be at home with your parents. <laughs> that's that's real. Well, that's I mean, real. You'll be that's, with your parents. Yeah. That is, and that's one of the things that we tell our kids. And I'm trying to tell. I got one that's a little warrior. I'm like, even before he entered school, he was talking about it. Two years old, he was saying how if somebody hit him, he gonna tear him up. He said somebody hit his brother, he finna tear him up. I said, now we are you in school. I He's, forgot a brother. He, no, this this is some kids that I did. Okay. Uh, he got lots of them on the other side. Oh, okay. But um, but in, at any rate, the the little boy is now in school, so he people up. Like, but I'm, I'm like, mom. If he's already has his mind where he's thinking, why don't you feed that? Right. And then later direct that physical part. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right. Being the one that's suspending people around this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We run into mama law or family law and school law. Because mm -hmm. one of the things I want parents to understand is I'm not telling your child not to hit back. I'm Definitely because I'm I'm firmly I'm before. firmly against not I'm firmly before. against being bullied. Mm -hmm. I'm firmly against because I have a child to go here and if my child allowed himself to get his ass kicked because he was trying to get to a teacher, I'm going to kick his ass. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're living in a world where although we want our children to mm -hmm. To tell the authorities much. first, we're living in a country that when somebody bomb, bomb a building, they will wreak war and havoc on the whole goddamn country. Hold on, you know what I'm saying? We got a country who whose politics says uh, they come up with a concept called uh, uh, um, it, it's you hit somebody because you thought they was gonna hit you a preemptive strike. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I was scared of that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, this is what I tell parents when I'm suspended because I do suspend. Now, when your child hits somebody or they hit somebody back, then you as a parent need to come in and celebrate your child for doing what you taught them. But they're going to come home. That's the bottom line fact. I don't want you or your child to think I'm saying that you're wrong. But understand there's consequences the for all these actions. That's right. Mm -hmm. So your child kick as much ass as they want, right? But understand there's going to be consequences with that. You know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, because it's like we kind of confuse our children. You know what I'm saying? Because we want them to be able to defend themselves, but we tell them to tell authorities, but then we be at home and we know we can't trust the authorities. We've been raised in a culture that has been hiding from authorities forever. 
Mm -hmm. Hell, we just, mm -hmm. I, we might not still even be telling our true census numbers. When the census come around, niggas is dodging. <laughs> we don't pay our <laughs> whole like, taxes. Oh, no, right. You like, know what I'm saying? We trying to get, we trying to find and hustle somebody for some food stuff. We still hiding from the system and we telling our children, hey, you got to follow the rules. But they see all the shit that we doing and they get, con it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a split, it's a psychic split. And then we wonder why our kids crazy, because mm. they are confused. So I'm not confused. I don't confuse. I don't. I'm not. Cleveland's we not war, confused about we that. We don't say. We don't say we're war. war. And some of the enemy look like you. That's the enemy. Some of the enemies look like you. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Just because they black don't mean they on your side, yeah, dog. I said that's it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We got to be clear about that. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, hey. I, it's like that Matrix thing. You know what I'm saying? You, you never know when Mr. Smith's going to pop up on you, right? Mm, mm, mm. So, um, I'm going to play another tune. <laughs> We're going to take a break. I'm going to play another tune. This is Hotep by Mr. Deity. I hope it's the one I wanted, but if not, it's cool. This is Jeremy Journey Radio. The Heart of Assemble Productions, where we strive to blow up your old paradigms.
We're back. We're back. We stepped out. Man, the music don't last as long as it used to. <laughs> so we are. What we gonna be doing next week with the kids? Of course, we got our session next week, and we have uh, a guest speaker coming. I'm a hip hop dancer. Uh, actually, we don't even need to read no more. We can just sign off. This is Brother Hot Tim. Anybody else want to announce their name to the world? Tracy. Look, Miss Shamika. <laughs> Trina. All right. This is Jeremy Journey Radio. <laughs> um, a heart of Simba Productions. <laughs> I'm striving to blow up. Your old paradigm. We out. I was born a colonial boy. I went to colonial school. I went to England to study music and everything. Tribute to Fela by Brother B Jazz. Um, also, you heard Ashe Ashe by B Jazz. And once again, we're going to go out with Ancestral Flow by Mr. Deity.